It's time now for the Athlete of the Week, and it's brought to you by Diamond Point in Sauk Center. And with us today is Preston Pepping, and he is with the Melrose Cross Country team right now. So we like to start out with uh, your family. Tell us who's in your family, okay? Um, I have my dad, who is Phil. My mom is Bonnie. I have my oldest sister, Tasha, and then a, a sister in between us, who is Callie. Mm -hmm. So I'm the youngest of three. Okay. And what other, what other activities are you involved in? Uh, so I'm involved in cross country, speech as of last year, and I'll do it this year again, track and field, National Honor Society, and student council. All right. I want to touch on a few things here uh, about uh, cross country, obviously, because that's what you're doing now. But I want to start out, though, with track, because that's still in my memory of last year. There's some good things going on with the Melrose track team, isn't there? Can you describe what's happening? Um, yeah. So... Last year, we, we sent the most participants that I've ever seen sent to state track meet, which was really impressive, and it was really fun to go and watch them. And we actually had Jesse Mittendorf, who won the 800-meter dash, I think it's called, and considered, mm -hmm. and his time was astounding. So that was really fun to watch and see. It seems to be the, in general, attitude. Uh, how has that picked up with, uh, I see, as you guys compete out there, and a, a person like Mittendorf, he is jacked up, isn't he? Yes, he <laughs> yeah. is. He is an amazing runner. It's insane to watch him run. It's just fun to see him run all the time. I really enjoy it. So does that uh, feed off on everybody else then? I think so, because during practices, whenever we run like relays or just like different dashes and sprints during practice, then we always have to try and keep up with him as much as possible. So it just pushes all the other athletes as well. All right. And before we get more into cross country, uh, what about speech? What uh, got you involved in that? Um... I think I asked speech because of all the positive benefits that you can have from speech and public speaking, so getting better at all of that and not being as nervous to talk in front of people, which is a really good value and skill to have, and also lots of friends who are involved in it. So, so take us through a typical event then uh, for, for us who have never been to one. What happens there? Um, so yeah, so basically all the teams arrive and normally they meet in like a general area, like a cafeteria, and then all the teams, at least the Mellow's team, goes and do, does a warm-up at first and then after that you sort of separate off into your different categories so uh, my category is extemporaneous speaking so that's a category where you draw 30 minutes before you speak so then all the people who are in other draw categories what they're called they have to go to normally like a library and they all meet together but then they all draw at different times and they speak 30 minutes after that so is this something that you read then uh, extemporaneous speaking. So extemporaneous speaking, you have to, you draw and then you pick a topic. So normally it's always about like, um, it's always about politics and political. And then you have to make like an argument about it. So it might ask like a question like, is Donald Trump doing everything that he can do? So you have to give normally like three main points about it. And then you have to do that in 30 minutes and have like sources that you have collected from different news articles and then you have to give a speech about why you feel the way that you do. Mm. Well, that's interesting because uh, there's many ways you can go in that yeah. direction, right? Yep. So yeah, there's lots of different ways that you can go and sometimes, not always, and it's not supposed to be biased at all, but sometimes you can tell like the judges don't agree with you, but they're not supposed to judge you based on how they feel politically. Well, because President Trump, you could <laughs> you could say one thing or the other. Yeah. Uh, so, w what do you do in, in in that instance? Then, do you try to stay positive, negative? I or mean, how? I normally try to stay positive personally, and I just try to find as many positive things about him. But some things are obviously going to be negative, okay. as always. And it depends on how you feel, right? Yep. All right. So let's talk about cross country. You are a senior now, finally, right? Yes. All right. Senior. I, I want to touch on uh, just uh, training coming into your senior season. And the reason I bring this up is compared to, say, two summers ago when you were a junior. How have things changed for you? Um, I think that since it's senior year and it's going to be the last year of high school, I think I just want to try and train as much as possible, and that's what I did, to try and just better myself as much for the upcoming season so then you don't have to look back and have regrets about what you didn't do and what you didn't do to try and go to state or try and meet your goal time that you have set or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Because a year ago, uh, describe to us uh, what happened at the region meet or at the, the section meet. Um, yeah, uh, section meet was a little bit... It wasn't a, it was still a really fun race to compete against, but it was very cold that day. So everything kind of just went numb when I started running and then yeah, I ended up not going to state even though I was probably like select or like thought that I was going to go to state. Mm -hmm. And I had in my head that I would probably go to state, which is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So up to this point, how are things going for you? 
Um, they're going really well. I like the team that I'm on right now. Everybody works really hard and everybody's pushing each other. And our team this year is doing quite well. Like times, we're doing way better than what we did last year on the boys' side, which is really fun to see. And it's nice to be a captain during a situation like that, to have such a good team behind you. So normally, like last year especially, and this year at the beginning of the year, I always started off like the race, and my first mile is always faster than what it should have been. But then I was always told, like, that's okay if your mile is faster than what it should be at the beginning, because towards the end of the season, you're going you're gonna to want to try and maintain that pace that you set at the beginning. But then t once you get to like, the second mile and then your last mile, then it always slowed down for me from there. So I'm trying this year now especially to like sort of even them out a little bit more. So like first mile should be pretty fast, but then second mile should maybe be like a little bit slower and then third mile should just be almost as fast as your first mile. So it's hard to try and do that to pace yourself that well and just to know even though you're not like where you want to finish at the beginning of the race, you'll try and pass those people who are in front of you and you'll try and have a faster third mile than what they do. Mm -hmm. So a race is how long? Uh, five 5,000 meters, so 3.1 miles. 3.1 yeah. all right so again pacing yourself to me that seems to be the the hardest thing to do out there to try to figure things out have you found yourself in, improving in that area yeah I think I've been improving in that area especially like this year when training over the summer a little bit more then you just build up your endurance already that you had before the season started and as you get older for guys especially it seems like your muscle mass is just a little bit greater than what you had before so you can just hold your paces a little bit more than what you could have in the past so say for example, uh, you've run against the uh, runner from Morris a lot, right? Yes. Okay, and he gets out there. Yep. Now, so what is going through your head? Are you saying, I've got to keep my own pace or stay up with him? Or how do you do this? Um, yeah, he's very fast. He's a, he's a great runner. So yeah, at the beginning, he always runs really fast. And I knew from like the Morris meet, I was like right with all those guys, like Noah Stewart from Morris. And then like I realized that I can't just keep up with him all the time because he can hold and maintain it better than what I can. So I just know that I have to like stay a little bit behind him just to keep my own pace and not worry as much about where his position is at, but worry just about where I am at. So then in order to go to the state this year, uh, you pretty much know who you're going to be running against? Yeah. Yeah. So we had the meet at New London Spicer and that's... That's where the sections is going to be held this year. So New London Spicer, there's lots of teams there. I think there was 22 varsity boys teams that were running. So that was almost every single team in our section for boys and for girls that were running at that meet. So you really got a good idea of where you might finish for sections. So again, as you're running a race, are you looking ahead? Are you counting and you knowing that you have to finish in the top 10, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely counting and knowing where I have to finish as much as possible because I want to just have like a general idea of where I have to be so I know exactly like if I have to pick it up a lot or if I just have to try and maintain it and still be able to have a good sprint at the end. I see runners out there too that it's got to be a mental thing and sometimes it's physical to where I see they're holding their sides and yeah. things like that. How do you then try to uh, get through that? Um, yeah, I always try to prepare as much as possible and drink a lot of water, especially like the day and the night and the morning of the meets that you have because drinking a lot of water right before you run won't really benefit you at all. But just try to stay hydrated as much as possible to try and avoid all those cramps and everything and you just have to power through it when you run. Do you find that too, uh, going off for cross country, is it a sport for everyone or do you have to have, because uh, I see again some runners it's like I'm not sure if this sport is for you or not or how do you look at something like that? Um, I think that cross country is a sport for everybody because everybody can run no matter what they think and you train so you can be able to run through 0.1 miles consistently without walking or anything and you just build up from where you start. So I think that cross country is a sport for everybody. And everybody can also run, so like there's no bench at all. So every single athlete can run a th five kilometers, or if they're in junior high, then they run two miles. One thing too, I just want to mention uh, again, your coach uh, Scott Braver and uh, the other coaches too. Everybody is very energetic, aren't they? To, to get everybody yeah. motivated. Yeah, this year, yeah, even all the years, they've been really energetic, and it's really fun to have energetic coaches and other teammates that you have on the on your team. So it really just motivates you to be as fast as you can while you're running. Mm -hmm. Well, you looking forward to the section? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the section meet. <laughs> because, again, being a senior, this is your last shot. Just mentally, physically, are you there? I think I can be there this year. I think I'll be there. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being with us. That is uh, Preston Pepping, and he is the Athlete of the Week, brought to you by Diamond Point in Sauk Center.